Welcome to worship for Sunday, October 16th, 2022, here at First Presbyterian Church of Gardner, Kansas. I continue my sermon series for our 40 days of prayer with another look at another occasion of 40 in the scripture today, the 40 spies of Israel going into the Canaan, land of Canaan, and the 40 years in the wilderness of all the people of Israel. There are three scripture passages for today. The first two are from Numbers and the third from Joshua. Hear God's word from Numbers chapter 13, verses 25 through 28 and verses 30 through 33. At the end of 40 days, they returned from spying out the land and they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation of the Israelites in the wilderness of Paran at Kadesh. They brought back word to them and to all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they reported to him and said, we came to the land to which you sent us. It flows with milk and honey and, that, and this is its fruit. Yet the people who live in the land are strong and the towns are fortified and very large. And besides, we saw the descendants of Anak there. But Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up and once, at once and occupy it, for we are well able to overcome it. Then the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against this people, for they are stronger than we. So they brought to the Israelites an unfavorable report of the land that they had spied out, saying the land that we have gone through as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people that we saw in it are of great size, and to ourselves we seemed like grasshoppers, and so we seemed to them. Continuing on, Several chapters later, with Numbers chapter 32, verses 7 through 13, intervening between these two scripture passages are 40 years in the wilderness. And here is the follow-up. Why will you discourage the hearts of the Israelites from going over into the land that the Lord has given them? Your fathers did this when I sent them from Kadesh Barnea to see the land. When they went up to the Wadi Eshol and saw the land, they discouraged the hearts of the Israelites from going into the land that the Lord had given them. The Lord's anger was kindled on that day. And he swore, saying, Surely none of the people who came up out of Egypt from 20 years old and up shall see the land that I swore to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, because... They have not unreservedly followed me, none except Caleb, son of Jephunneh, the Kenazite, and Joshua, son of Nun. For they have unreservedly followed the Lord. And the Lord's anger was kindled against Israel, and he made them wander in the wilderness for 40 years until all the generation that had done evil in the sight of the Lord had disappeared. And continuing, Joshua chapter 5, just one verse, verse 6 of Joshua 5. For the Israelites traveled 40 years in the wilderness until all the nation, the warriors who came out of Egypt, perished, not having listened to the voice of the Lord. To them the Lord swore that he would not let them see the land that he had sworn to their ancestors to give us a land flowing with milk and honey. Here ends this reading. May God bless us with understanding for this word and all of God's words for us. In today's scripture, we have two different stories divided by 40 years of history, all around the same theme of trusting God. Who will trust God and who will wander in the wilderness and wait in the wilderness? The theme of the wilderness or the desert is a common theme or image in scripture. Uh, remember a couple of weeks ago, I, uh, we had a scripture, passage, a scripture passage that was about Jesus 
uh, being tested in the wilderness for 40 days. Uh, the image or the symbol of wilderness is a place of preparation and testing. Uh, it's a place of emptiness that can be filled by God. Or conversely, a place that can be filled with evil or temptation if, if we do not give God the proper place. Often seen as dry and barren, that emptiness can also be rich with possibility, with surprises of grace. The wilderness is an open place in which to learn and to grow, to get stronger and more connected with God. Witness Jesus spending 40 days in the wilderness there between baptism and ministry. Not surprisingly, the Israelites who grumbled and complained saw the wilderness as a place of punishment uh, where they were exiled for 40 years. Perhaps, it, perhaps if you do not recognize God's true nature and guidance, any place can be a place of darkness. In the Bible, the garden and the wilderness are two common symbols, two places, both created by God with purpose. Uh, the garden represents order and uh, absolute presence of God. We find a garden in the beginning, in Eden. We find a garden also at the center of the resurrection story. And finally, at the end of time in paradise. Uh, as the garden represents order, the wilderness represents chaos, where really anything can happen, good or bad. God is in the wilderness, but so is the madness of the world. So is thirst, so is death. Both garden and wilderness are created by God and kept by God. God can be found in the garden. God can be found in the wilderness by those who seek. Indeed, God and grace can be found even in chaos. This is the word of God. Our stories for today begin just after last week's scripture lessons. Moses led the people out of, out of Egypt. Uh, Moses received the Ten Commandments on the mountain of God. Uh, the people experienced God's protection and God's provision. God led the people to the edge of the promised land, the, the land promised four generations prior to the family of Abraham and the followers of God. Just before today's scripture, Moses chose 12 spies to go out into the area, the promised land, and come back with a report of what to expect. Remember in numerology or in the study of important numbers in the Bible, particularly 12 is important, like 40 is important. Uh, if three is God and four is humanity, then three plus four, seven, is, an, is a powerful number for God working with humanity. Likewise, three times four, 12, uh, 12 reminds us that God is always working in the world and usually working through people. 12 becomes very important in the Bible. 12 tribes of Israel, 12 disciples. Uh, and in the book of Revelation, 12 gates into paradise, 12 angels around the throne of God, and, and even the number 12 times 12, which is the number of saints in paradise with God. 12 times 12 is, is meant to represent infinity, something that cannot be limited, God's endless grace. So back to today's story, the story for today. <coughs> uh, Moses chooses 12 spies, one for each tribe of Israel. They go into the promised land uh, and they explore for 40 days. In that 40 days, they are sent to find out everything that 
they can find out about the land and the people of the promised land. Uh, when they return, our scripture for today picks up. Ten of the twelve spies are frightened. They say, oh, the people are so big and bad and, and we can never win. Ten of the twelve. But two of those twelve spies, that is Joshua, who later becomes the leader of the people after Moses, Joshua and Caleb say, no, God's got this. God is in charge and God will take care of us as God has promised this land to us and our descendants. God will lead us where God promised us. So they say, let's go, let's win. We, we can do this. Let God, let's trust God and move forward in faith. Because the majority, majority were afraid, frightened and afraid, um, Moses and God determined that it was, they were not yet ready to move forward. God sent the people into the wilderness for 40 days. Now that is often seen as punishment, and in fact in today's reading it, it came off sounding like punishment. But really, I believe that in God's view, the wilderness was the right place for that generation, for that time. The wilderness became a place of preparation and purpose for the people of Israel. During those 40 years, uh, the people learned, learned to be with God, to depend on God. They had to during that 40 years. It was a time filled with miracles and blessing. God provided for them as they moved forward and around and about in the wilderness. God provided manna to eat. God provided water when needed. They learned in that 40 years, they learned to thrive. The families grew, the tribes grew, and they built a strong heritage. They depended on one another, and they depended on God. And God blessed them. In the wilderness, God blessed them. Our 40 days of prayer uh, can be seen in several different ways. It, it is a slow time, a quiet time, a time of waiting, discerning, for some, it might even be a struggle. Too much time, too much waiting. But this 40 days of prayer is not something to get through to get to the next step, whatever that might be. Rather, this 40 days is the right time for right now. It is a time of preparation, a time of listening, a time for God to work in us and among us, to strengthen us, and help us to grow in grace. This is a time for God to build us up and open us up. We depend on God and one another. In this 40 days, God is helping us to trust God, helping us to believe that God can do anything. This 40 days of prayer is 40 days with God. During the 40 years in the scripture, we describe the Israelites as wandering in the wilderness. Now, we think of that as a dry desert struggle, constant, with desperate difficulty, thirst, and weariness. And in reality, there were many struggles, but it was not aimless or empty. The Israelites lived much like Bedouin societies and tribes live today, or migrant workers live today. They went where the grazing fields were. They followed the animals. They moved with the weather and the animals. They, they probably stayed in one area for a season with tents and uh, sturdy structures, but temporary structures that could be moved again. They, they became more natural, bound to creation and bound to the creator. 
they didn't put down roots, but they put down communities. It was a time to learn, to, to learn to depend on God and one another, to grow into the community God knew that they could be, not dependent on Egypt, but dependent on God. They grew confident in God's grace and God's power. At the end of that 40 years, the Israelites emerged ready, ready for the promised land. They emerged from their 40 years as a powerful people of God, a witness to the God who goes with you wherever you go, even in our wandering and our wondering. They knew that God is not tied to one place, but God is everywhere and always with us. They knew that God was not tied to one image or one way of being. God is a God of all people, for all time, in every place. Our little 40-day experiment here in prayer is not 40 years in the wilderness. We will not face those trials and those troubles and difficulties of the people of Israel. We may, however, learn the lessons of those 40 years, um, lessons in patience and persistence, in community and connection. We may, in fact, be shaped by God in new and miraculous ways. We can decide to trust God, to follow Jesus Christ wherever Christ leads, into the chaos of the wilderness or into the order of community. We can trust God. Either way, wherever God leads us, God's creativity will inspire us in these 40 days and beyond to inspire us to new life, new hope, new mission in this corner of the world, by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.